Assalamu alaikum dear students now our next lecture is compass surveying and in this lecture first we are going to discuss the following topics introduction compass traversing principle of compass surveying and compass and its types the branch of surveying in which the direction of survey lines are determined by compass and their lengths by chaining directly on the ground is called compass survey thus in compass survey linear as well as angular measurements are taken method of chain surveying is useful when the area to be surveyed is small more or less level and, ha and has less obstruction in chaining but when the area to be surveyed is large then it is not possible to do survey work by chain survey only in such circumstances angle measuring instrument are also used for measuring angles between the chain lines at survey stations the compass has been used by navigators and explorers for many centuries to determine directions prior to invention of theodolite it was the only means of measuring directions and horizontal angles in compass traversing the direction of the traverse lines are determined with the magnetic compass the and the length of the traverse traverse lines is measured with chain or tape the accuracy of compass traverse is also limited the principle of compass surveying is traversing which involves the series of connected survey lines the magnetic bearings of line are observed by compass and the distance of the lines are measured by chain or tape compass surveying is recommended when the area when the large area is to be surveyed the passage of river or coast line to be surveyed the area is crowded with many details and triangulation is not possible compass surveying is not recommended for the areas where local attraction is suspected a compass is a small instrument which consists essentially of magnetic needle a graduated circle and the line of sight when the line of sight is directed towards a line the magnetic needle po to points towards magnetic meridian and the angle which line makes with the magnetic meridian is read at graduated circle the compass cannot be the compass cannot measure the angle between the two lines directly if it is desired to find out the angle between two lines first their angles with the magnetic meridian are determined separately and then difference between the two line between the two values is found which is equal to the angle between the two lines the two forms of compass commonly used in compass surveying are prismatic compass and surveyor's compass the other compass used are rough compass and tabular compass here we are going to discuss the two prismatic compass and surveyor's compass the general principle on which the compass work is same for all types of compass if a long and a narrow magnetized iron or steel strips suspended on a pivot at its center it is, is allowed to oscillate freely about its vertical axis passing through the pivot it always will tend to assume the direction of magnetic meridian at that place now prismatic compass it's a very valuable instrument and is commonly used for rough surveys where speed and not the accuracy is main consideration it was invented by captain cater in 1814 as shown in figure the label diagram of prismatic compass the different elements of prismatic compass are as compass box or cylindrical metal box pivot magnetic needle graduated ring agitated cap glass cover prism prism cap sighting silt colored glasses focusing screw object vane horse hair reflecting mirror brake pin spring brake lifting pin and lifting river now the construction of prismatic compass it consists of cylindrical metallic box of 8 cm to 12 cm diameter in center of which pivot in, in center of which is pivot carrying the magnetic needle which is already attached to the graduated aluminum ring with the help of an agit cap the ring is graduated to half a degree and is read by a reflecting prism which is protected from dust moisture etc by prism cap 
diametrically opposite to the prism is the objective vein hinged to the box side and carrying the horse hair which is, which with an object in the field is bisected the eye is applied at the eye hole below the sighting cell the graduations on the ring can be observed directly by the eye after they are reflected from the diagonal of the prism the graduations can be made clearly visible by adjusting the prism to the eye side by focusing screw both the horizontal and vertical faces of the prism are made convex to give magnified readings to prevent undue wear of the pivot point the object vein is brought down on the face of the glass cover which pos which presses against the lifting pin and the needle is then automatically lift off the pivot by lifting lever to damp the oscillations of the needle before taking a reading and to bring it rest quickly the light spring brake attached to the attached to inside the box is brought in contact with the edge of the ring by gently pressing inward the brake pin if the bearings of very high or very low objects are to be taken the reflecting mirror which slides on the object vein is tilted and image obtained it is bisected by the horse here a pair of glasses sh shall have to be interposed between the silt and the colored vein when the sun or some luminous object is to be bisected a metal cover fits over the glass covers as well as the object vein when the compass is not in use now working of the prismatic compass this can be used while holding it in a hand but for the better accuracy it is usually mounted on a light tripod which carries a vertical spindle in a ball and a socket arrangement to which the compass is screwed by means of this arrangement compass can be placed in position easily its working involves three following steps centering leveling and observing the bearing centering the centering of compass is placed vertically over the station point by dropping a small piece of stone below the center of the compass so that it falls on the top of the peg marking the station or by means of u fork and the plumb bob centering can be done leveling by means of a ball and socket arrangement the compass is then leveled so that graduation ring swings quite freely it may be tested by rolling a round pencil on the compass box observing the bearing having centered the instrument over the station and leveled it raise or lower the prism until the graduation on the ring are clearly visible when looked through the prism turn the compass until the ranging rod at the forward station is clearly visible use the brake pin and bring the ring at rest and take the readings at which the hair at which the hair line appears to be appears to be cut the graduated ring readings are estimated up to nearest 15 minutes it may be noted that with the compass the sight of the object and the reading of the graduated ring are done simultaneously now to measure the bearing of a uh, object b with respect to a consider a line ab which the magnetic bearing is to be taken by fixing the ranging rod at the station b we get the magnetic bearing needle with respect to north pole the enlarged portion gives the actual pattern of graduations marked on the ring now the surveyor's compass it was formerly much used for land surveys but but now it is it is little used it is similar to prismatic compass except that it has the another plane sight having a narrow vertical slit in place of prism and that it carries an edge bar needle in place of the broad form needle now working of the surveyor compass the centering and leveling is same as in prismatic compass but observing the bearing of a line is different in surveyor compass in this compass the readings are taken from the top of a glass and under the tip of north end of the magnetic needle directly no prism is provided here now comparing prismatic compass and surveyor compass in prismatic compass the graduated ring being attached to the magnetic needle remains stationary when the compass box and the sight vein is rotated 
while on the other hand the graduated ring being attached to the compox, compass box in surveyor compo compass moves with the sides and needle remains stationary when the box is moved in prismatic compass the graduations are marked on the ring in clockwise direction with 0 to 360 degree at south end of the needle so that 90 is marked at the west 180 is marked uh, at north 270 is at east the as shown figure the graduation marked in surveys compassed both in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction dividing the graduation ring into four quadrants and the graduations are numbered from 0 to 90 in each quadrant. The zero points are marked at north and south and 90 at east and west. The east and west have been interchanged from their two positions. The sighting of an object and reading of bearing are done simultaneously. They can, this can be used without a stand. An object is sighted first and the bearing is then read with the marked eye by going vertically over the middle point. This cannot be used without a stand. With this, I conclude the lecture first of compass surveying. Thank you.